Oh, I know that sound. It's time for the beer and news report. Hi, and welcome to the beer news report. Cheers. Today, in honor of Olympics, I am drinking Kirin Light. Yeah. Which, according to the label, is brewed by Anheuser-Busch under Kirin's strict supervision. At 95 calories, it'll keep my figure just as it is. Round. This is Japan's version of Bud Light. And I'm cool with that. It's just like you would think. It's light, refreshing, easy to drink. On those days where I just want something to quench my thirst and not really catch a buzz, this is perfect. Cheers. Have you ever been with some friends and you start talking about something and everyone busts out laughing? Well, that happened to me recently, and it all started with someone saying, you know what would be funny? So that's what today's show is going to be about. It's a possible scenario, conspiracy if you will, about the coronavirus vaccine. I thought it was funny as heck. And I was drinking, and words sometimes are funny when you're drinking, right? So this might not be as funny sober, but let's give it a shot. All right, so grab a beer, maybe two, and get ready for some dark fun on the possible vaccine conspiracy. Cheers. All right, first things first. We have to state the facts. And the facts are that the coronavirus is real. I don't care what you naysayers promote. This is a real virus. Second. It was discovered while Trump was president. Just getting a timeline down here. Third, the vaccine was developed while Trump was president under Project Warp Speed. These are the facts and the basis for this story to continue. Okay, next. Why do we even have conspiracies? Mainly because we think the government is doing something wrong and not telling us. One of the biggest ones to date was the Watergate conspiracy. All right, a quick review. The coronavirus is real. Trump is president, the vaccine was made under his administration, and the government is up to something, but we don't know what it is. All right, are you with me so far? <laughs> Cheers. Now let's think about what's going through President Trump's mind when he first got elected. Right, he's, he's thinking to himself, this is a kick-ass job. I get to rule a country and pretty much the whole world, and, and I don't even want to give this up. Now President Trump is clearly thinking he's going to be a two-term president. But now he's thinking, hey, FDR got to be president for four terms. How do I get that? Well, first off, he's going to get all the Republicans under his control, which he pretty much did. And then he's going to get the judicial branch siding with him and then get rid of some of those damn Democrats. Now, as we all know, the Republicans installed a bunch of Republican-thinking federal judges, including several Supreme Court judges. So the only thing left to do is to get rid of the Democrats. How do you do that? enter the coronavirus. But we need to keep the Republicans alive. So now we have to do the coronavirus vaccine. So the timeline is we install the judges we need, we design the virus to do the dirty work, and then we make a vaccine to protect the people we want to protect. So when the coronavirus first comes out, you play it cool and you don't make a big deal out of it. You're just going to lay it low and let it do what it was designed to do. But your scientists tell you, hey, uh, you know, we're going to need about six months to a year to develop a vaccine. So after a couple months, the coronavirus is growing in the United States, and you announce, hey, we're going to make a vaccine. So the fact is, Operation Warp Speed started in 2020. So far, the only conspiracy is that the virus was designed. Nothing really about the vaccine. Okay, I'm getting to that. you got to follow the timeline. Please be patient. Cheers. All right, where was I? The coronavirus is in the United States, and we're just starting to get the vaccine developed. The year is 2020, and President uh, Trump is the president. <laughs> All right. Now, the virus is doing what it was designed to do. It is infecting millions of people. There's death everywhere. Meanwhile, the elections are going on, and the vaccine hasn't been announced, right? That's when a twist happens, right? Because President Trump doesn't get reelected. And in order for his plan to work, he has to get reelected. Because if Trump gets reelected, the Republicans will follow his lead, meaning that they will take the vaccine. Whereas the Democrats will refuse to take the vaccine because they don't trust Trump, leading to more Democrats dying, and the Republicans will have total control of the government. That's the plan, and it will work. But it backfired, right? Because Biden got elected. And I'm sure when Biden got elected, the Republicans were looking at each other saying, wait, wait. The Americans voted for who? <laughs> Which is funny, because the election right before this, the Democrats under Hillary Clinton were probably saying the same thing, right? They were like, you got to be kidding me. The Americans voted for Trump? <laughs> so Biden becomes president, and he turns to Trump saying, 
Hey, Donald. Yo, Donnie boy. Thanks for the vaccine. I'll take it from here. Of course, President Trump is pissed. It's like you're at work. You just finished a big report. And your co-worker comes up to you and says, hey, good job. Don't worry. I'll give it to the manager. And he takes your report. Wouldn't you be pissed? Right? You'd yell back at your coworker. Hey, Alan, you better say it's from me. And nobody cares that you used to work for the compensation department. Yeah. Cheers. So now Democrats have taken the vaccine and the Republicans are refusing it, leading to more Republicans dying. Now, obviously, Trump can't let this happen. He's got to take back the presidency. So he leads an insurrection on the Capitol building. And it almost worked, right? At no time can he give up trying to be president. The fate of the Republican Party is in his hands. So now Trump has taken the corona vaccine and he's told the Republican followers to do the same. And most of the Republicans in Congress have taken the vaccine, right? Even Republican leader Mitch McConnell has announced that Republicans and everyone else should get vaccinated. Now, they all know the plan, obviously, right? But they can't tell anyone. It's, it's almost certain jail time. So what are the next steps? Well, the Republicans need to block the voting power of the Democrats, right? So now they enact these voting laws, which make it easier for Republicans to vote, but harder for the Democrats. It's done in several states, mainly in the South. In the meantime, Democrats are in power, right? And there's a Democratic president. There's Democrats that control Congress. So they're trying to enact laws that will make them look good, right? So the Republicans have to stop this too. And if you remember, President Trump also wanted to do this infrastructure bill. He was going to spend a trillion dollars doing it, but he never got to it. So wait a minute. Biden is also going to steal that from him too? Who is this guy, right? Cheers. So they have to stop the Democrats from doing the infrastructure bill, or at least water it down so it really has no punch. Now, one way to do this is you ask, how are you going to pay for this, right? That seems reasonable. But the government prints its own money, and they can print as much as they want. So technically speaking, they don't really need to raise taxes. The Republicans know this, but they can't allow this to be a blank check to the Democrats, right? So you say, spending that much will put us too far in debt, which is true. I mean, we're talking about trillions and trillions of dollars here. But if you're building infrastructure, which means jobs, and jobs means people with money, and people with money means that they're going to buy things, and when you buy things, the GDP of the U.S. goes up. So if you can get the GDP to go up faster than you're spending money, then you should be okay. At least that's what the economists say. So the Democrats are now trying to raise taxes on the rich, but the Republicans say, no, we just did a tax cut, and to reverse that would be a partisan move. So that's off the table. The Democrats want over $3 trillion, but the Republicans say, no, let's keep it under $1 trillion. That's basically lowballing, right? If you've ever been to a swap meet or a street market, it's called haggling. It's very common. You've probably done it, right? We've all done it. Cheers. So how does this end? The Democrats will eventually pass some form of the infrastructure bill. How big depends on how effective the Republicans can work with the Democrats, you know, whittle them down. The coronavirus and its variants are going to be a gut punch for the Republican Party. They're going to lose some voters, meaning that they're going to die. The only thing that might save the Republican Party, believe it or not, is Kamala Harris. She has a tell. And if you've ever played poker with someone with a tell, it's easier to win against them. It's like taking candy from a baby, right? Cheers. So what's a tell? What am I talking about? Did you see the interview from the NBC News anchor Lester Holt with Kamala Harris where he asked if she's been to the wall? Is she totally locked up and laughed it off? But that's her tell. We've been to the border. You haven't been to the border. I, and I haven't been to Europe. And I, mean, I, don't, I don't understand the point that you're making. She laughs when she doesn't know how to respond. And that's when you know you got her. So if you're in a debate and you're going against Kamala Harris and the moderator brings up a subject where she responds by laughing, then you know that you need to constantly bring that subject up. Literally just harp on that subject. Because you know what happens when you get flustered? Even questions that you knew before, you get mixed up and you, it comes out bad. And that's where the Republicans have a chance. They get her flustered, they can beat her in a debate. So it all depends on who the Republicans put up against her. And of course, Biden has to step down after one term. He's pretty old and being president ages you fast. So I don't know if he can actually do two terms. We'll see. Cheers. Well, as you can see, my beer is almost empty. And that means we're at the end of the show. 
If you want to contact me, I can be reached at this email address. I hope you had a good time watching a couple laughs. I thought this thing was funny as heck. And if you did like it, click that like button. And of course, if you want to get notified, you click that subscribe button and the little bell icon next to it. That'll let you know when I post a new show. Until then, keep your beer cold and your interest hot. Cheers.